Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISC QB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about data for ML and continuing ahead with our last segment today which is 4.5 data labeling for supervised learning. In order to talk about data labeling, first of all, we just have to recall a few of the information what we have already covered in our past sessions that what is data labeling and why does it require to be there for supervised learning. Of course, super supervised learning it makes use of label data, which is going to, of course, classify the information in a way that the system can understand and adopt the information and go ahead according to the information, whereas data labeled our labeling is the most uh, for formal way of uh, labeling or kind of like using the data for the ML training, right? So data labeling is of course the enrichment of unlabeled or poorly labeled data by adding the labels to it. So it becomes more suitable for use in supervised learning. The data labeling is of course resource intensive activity that has been reported to use on average 25% of the time on the ML projects because the data is being labeled of course you can classify them categorize them you know what exactly you're using and how exactly you're going to feed the information or train the model in a very systematic way of course the unlabeled data becomes very clumsy and kind of like you know distributed in a way that sometimes you're not sure are you using the right set of data or not so if you have a very systematically organized set of data with you which is labeled it certainly can reduce a lot of your time considerably 25 percent of the time being taken into account to reduce the effort if it's simplest in its simplest form the data labeling can consist of putting images or text files in various folders based on their classes for example putting all text files of positive product reviews into one folder and all the negative reviews into another folder. Using a very layman level example here, just head, the classification can even happen based on the positive and negative feedbacks or reviews what you receive about a particular product, which is textual in manner. Similarly, when it comes to the images, when you talk about the product image, you talk about the product usage image or any certain thing like that can be used as a classifier to label the data. Labeling objects in the images by drawing rectangles around them is another common labeling technique, often known as annotation. More complex annotations could be required for labeling 3D objects or for drawing bounding boxes around irregular objects data labeling and annotations are typically supported by tools so we don't do that ourselves or manually so generally more about like your pictures can be in any shape or could be in any size and that's what you want to draw a border which could be a standard that ml will recognize that this is the size of the image which i need to follow and that's where annotations are being used as a term to represent that how exactly can we go ahead and label the images too. So I can use a specific size of shape like fixed coordinates and put all the images under that particular shape and size. And that certainly represents that, hey, this is what the boundaries are when the data is trying to read or get information from the data. And that's what you call it as label data when you classify text at the same time classify the images continuing on the same we do have another segment called as approaches of data labeling of course what are the different ways by which we can go ahead and label it so labeling may be performed in a number of ways first of course internal which means the labeling is performed by developers testers or team within the organization which is set up for labeling Whereas other option is outsourced, the labeling is done by an external specialist organization because it's not necessary. It's not about just putting a line, right? <laughs> so of course you do need someone really expert that what your ML model would really need and being appropriate with that could be crucial. The third option is crowdsourced. The labeling is performed by a large group of individuals due to the difficulty of managing the quality of the labeling Several annotators may be asked to label the same data and a decision then taken on the label to be used. So if you really want a multiple audience poll or consensus on understanding what is the best way to annotate the data, 
you can certainly use this option called as crowdsourced and take different opinions and then come up with one conclusion. Fourth, of course, take the help of AI itself, that is AI assisted. So AI based tools are used to recognize and annotate data or to cluster similar data. The results are then confirmed or perhaps supplemented, which means by modifying the bounding boxes or sometime by human as a part of two step process like AI doing the initial filtering or initial annotations and then humans also trying to review it. And the last, of course, is hybrid. A combination of the above labeling approaches could be used. For example, crowdsource labeling is typically managed by an external organization which has access to specialized AI crowd management tools. So you can combine two of them or more to get the best solution from the data labeling. So where applicable, it may be possible to reuse a pre-labeled data set too, hence avoiding the need for data labeling altogether. So if you have been using a kind of like data which was already labeled, then you could even, you know, excuse this particular step in your process and you can reduce a lot of your time. But it's certainly difficult that you get the appropriate data which is pre-labeled. So it just depends that if you're trying to train an ML model in something very common, like a segment which people have been working on for years now, then you can go ahead and say, okay, I'm looking forward to the pre-labeled data so that I can reduce my time and use the same data to train my model. So of course you can reduce further your effort if you have pre-labeled data with you. Finally, talking about the consequences related to what happens if your labeling goes wrong, and that's what we are referring to in mislabeled data in the data sets. Now, supervised learning assumes that the data is correctly labeled by the data annotators. However, it is rare in practice for all items in the data set to be labeled correctly because, of course, everything is error prone and humans are error prone too. Where sometimes, if humans are doing mistakes in AI based systems, the AI based system which is being used for annotation could also be wrong. Now, thus, data is mislabeled for all these following reasons. If we know about these reasons, certainly we can avoid them or prevent them to happen. Thus, our data will be more precise and better labeled. So, for example, random errors may be made by annotators, which is, I think, quite often we can reduce it to a certain extent, but we just can't eliminate it. Because humans, at the end of the day, can be 99.99% accurate, but that 0.1 cannot be determined. Systematic errors may be made, which is of course related to where the labels, labelers are given the wrong instructions or poor training about labeling the data. And certainly if they don't have clear context or clear uh, inference given to them, they may turn out things in a different manner. Deliberate errors may be made by malicious data annotators, could be another reason. Translation errors may take correctly uh, labeled data in one language and mislabeled in another. So translation could also be one of the criteria what we quite often see because AI based systems are again trying to be multilingual and uh, of course you start with the base data in one language and then try to convert it in different languages. Uh, talking about where the choice is open to interpretation, subjective judgments made by data annotators uh, may lead to conflicting data labels from different annotators too. So that's another opinion for sure which we can't excuse. Uh, lack of required domain knowledge may lead to incorrect labeling. So that's another common thing which we know from the fundamentals of testing that if you don't have proper information or knowledge about what you're doing, that could be always a reason for that. Inexperienced team members. Complex classifications tasks can result in more errors being made. If you have very, very close by classifications like slightly different from each other, that then at some time it becomes very difficult like to decide which class does it go into. <laughs> the tools uh, used to support data labeling have defects that lead to incorrect labels. So we just now learned in the previous slide that you have a possibility of using AI based tools to do the uh, labeling. And certainly if in case you have the defect in that tool, which is not being known or ignored, then certainly your outputs could be also wrong. Uh, ML based approaches to labeling are probabilistic and this can lead to some incorrect labels too. Again, AI-based system or ML-based uh, approaches which we use for labeling are probabilistic. That means it's 
probability based and it's not 100% accurate. So certainly some of the incorrect labeling can be done and that could result into some of the good failures. Anyway, so we just talked about what exactly labeling of data is and how exactly we do it, what are the challenges involved and why would this can be mislabeled. So we got a complete understanding of that. Should you have anything else, we should be looking forward to respond back to you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.